What's going on guys, welcome to another episode. In today's video, I'm gonna be ripping apart my transmission, putting a new limited slip differential in it, along with other bearings and seals. So if you guys have been following me with this build, I've been working on my Mini Cooper and it has been completely rebuilt. So I have the motor back from the machine shop, I have forged connecting rods, forged crankshaft, forged everything inside that engine. So it's gonna be bulletproof. So it's gonna be making a lot of power and I need that power to get down to the ground to both front wheels. So right now, I only have an open differential inside this Mini Cooper training. So what that means is that power is going to go to whichever wheel has the least amount of traction. So if it's gonna be going to one side, it can spin. Now, I'm gonna be changing that out today by putting a limited slip differential in here from Wave Track, along with putting new bearings and seals in it to bring this thing back to life. So, let's get right into it. Getting the transmission out of the car is the biggest part of this. So if you guys can get to that stage, you guys are laughing. So everything after that is gonna be a cakewalk. Now I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly today how to get that done. If you haven't seen the previous videos to this build, I showed you guys how to do everything, including remove the motor and the transmission. So if you guys wanna see that, I'll have some more links in the description box. But I'm gonna get started today with this transmission by splitting the casings. So I need to get access to the internals of the transmission. And in order to do that, we need to set the transmission down with the clutch case case clutch side up. You're going to want to use an E12 socket to remove each of the 20 M8 bolts. Following that, you can use a pry bar in between the little tabs found on the sides of the transmission, try to wiggle the transmission case up, and then you can lift the transmission straight up and out, and then at that point, you'll be able to see all the gears and all the internals of the train. Following that, we need to go ahead and clean the transmission. So it's very important when you guys are doing this, you guys wanna stay as clean as possible. Grab a clean rag and wipe the transmission of any dirt residue that's found on the inside of the casing. Now, if your transmission is super old, you might see more of that versus a new transmission. You're then gonna to wanna to grab another clean rag and wipe off the transmission magnet. So there's gonna be a magnet inside your manual transmission that's going to collect all those little metal particles that are floating inside the transmission fluid. So that magnet is gonna grab onto it and keep it all right there. So since we have this open, we're gonna get that magnet and clean it up and wipe it off. You should only ever really have to do this once in your transmission. So if this is the first time that the transmission is being opened up, that magnet is going to be covered in a decent amount of shavings. Now don't freak out, that's totally normal. You shouldn't, however, see any large chunks. Only like fine little stuff that you should be able to wipe off with a simple rag. With the clutch case now removed from the transmission, you should very easily be able to simply remove the differential and the ring gear by lifting it straight up and out. Now for this kind of transmission, you don't need to remove any gears in order to get access to the diff. If you're working on a Honda transmission or a different kind of transmission where the gears are in the way, you would have to remove those before you can get access to the differential. So we're gonna be working on the differential first, so we're gonna get started on that. We need to transfer the ring gear from the open differential to our new differential. You're going to need a 15 millimeter socket to remove each of the 10 bolts that are securing the ring gear to the differential. With a brass hammer or a ball peen hammer and a piece of wood, you're going to try and knock that ring gear loose from the diff. It should be seated on there quite well, so you might need to tap it a couple times. You don't want to use a steel hammer against a steel ring because at that point, that ring gear could potentially get damaged. If you damage one of those teeth, you're going to have to purchase a new one. Now notice that I'm working on a soft foam mat that will cushion the fall of the ring gear once it becomes loose. If you're working on pure concrete or something like that and it falls, you might chip a tooth, so keep that in mind. We now need to prepare the new LSD for the install. So of those 10 bolts that we removed from the ring gear, you wanna clean each one of them up. You don't wanna have any kind of thread locker on there, you don't want any kind of grease or even transmission fluid in there because that will alter the torque spec and how the bolt seats when we install the ring gear with those bolts onto the new diff. You can use a rag or some parts cleaner to get that done. Now following that, you wanna clean up the ring gear as well. So that mating surface and any other area that has some sort of contamination on it, you wanna clean that as best as you can now so that the install goes rather well. Now as for actually installing the ring gear on the new LSD, it's quite simple. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be a wave track diff. You can install this on an OS Geiken GIF or even another OEM differential. The install is going to be the exact same. Align the ring gear onto the new differential so the bolt holes will line up. Using a star pattern, slightly tighten four bolts incrementally until all four bolts are tight and the ring gear is seated on the diff. Following that, remove those four bolts we just put on and then clean those threads one more time. The reason why we're doing that is because we need to install some sort of thread locker onto those threads and we don't want oil to contaminate that thread. Apply some permanent grade red thread locker to each of the threads of the differential bolts and then thread each one of them into the differential. Tighten each one of those bolts to 49 foot pounds using that same 15 millimeter socket in a star pattern to ensure that the ring gear gets properly seated on the diff. 
You guys know how OCD I am with my cars. So what I'm gonna be using is an oil-based Sharpie to mark each one of the bolts on the diff. I'm gonna make it so that I can visually inspect each one of those bolts. Should that bolt loosen or tighten, I will be able to see if that bolt moved. You can use a white oil-based Sharpie, you can use a yellow one, red one, it doesn't matter the color, but as long as you can see it and they're all pointing in the same direction, you'll be good to go. Next up comes installing the new differential bearings. Since the new differential does not come with bearings, you'll either need to transfer over the old ones from your stock diff or buy new ones. Considering you're probably going to damage the stock bearings trying to remove them, it's a lot easier to simply purchase new ones and the best part is, is they're not that expensive. They're about 15 to 20 bucks each. Using a shop press will be the best way to seat the new bearings onto the diff as you won't be hitting the bearing which could potentially cause it to fail. The one that I'm using right here ran me a little under $200. Now if you don't have one, I would bring your diff and your bearings to a shop to get them to press it in. It shouldn't cost you much considering it only takes about five minutes at most to get this job done. I'm using a 38 millimeter socket with the press so it only puts pressure on the inner race of the bearing. Putting pressure on the outer race could potentially damage the bearing. Keep pumping the press until the bearing seats itself onto the diff. When the bearing stops moving down, the bearing is maxed out and then it's correctly installed. Flip the differential onto the opposite side and repeat the exact same procedure. You want to have it so that both of the differential bearings are properly seated on the diff. Next up comes setting the differential back into the transmission. As you can see, I put the diff back into the transmission the same way it came out, but it's actually the wrong way. So when I remove the clutch case part of the transmission, the fifth and sixth shift collar, the reverse gear, and the diff all came out, which shouldn't have happened. Now if it does, it isn't the end of the world, but it just means that you need to transfer all those parts to the opposite side of the trans. I struggled for a decent amount of time trying to get the trans back together because of this. What I should have done instead of wasting a half an hour, I should have transferred the diff and the gears over to the transmission side, which is where all the gears are. That's gonna make the install super easy. When I did exactly that, the gears turned as they should, and it took me no time at all to get the casing ready to be mated to the other side of the training. To seal the transmission back together, we need to use a gasket maker between the metals to ensure a proper seal. Before we can use any kind of gasket maker, we need the aluminum to be oil free. So wipe it down with the reg to ensure we get a good bond. I'm gonna be using Permatex One Minute Black Gasket Maker. It's rated for high temperatures up to 234 degrees of continuous heat, which is well above what this transmission will see. If the transmission gets that hot, we have some other problems. I wasn't sure how much of this stuff I was going to need, so I purchased a couple tubes, but you only really need one of them, and then this Permatex caulking gun. It's super easy to dispense a proper bead around the transmission casing when you have the proper tools. So this here is pretty much an everything gasket. What's cool about it is that you can use this for transmissions, you can use this for engines, so the oil pan, you can seal up a differential if you need to, like in a rear wheel drive car, or any other kind of water pump, or any other small part of the vehicle. This stuff is awesome, it dries in one minute, so one minute to the touch, and then after 24 hours, it's fully cured. But after that one minute's gone by, whatever you're sealing is good to go. Anyways, lay a steady bead around the casing around the inside of each of the bolt holes to ensure that the transmission doesn't leak when you fill it with fluid. Following that, grab the clutch case and slide it very carefully over the main shaft of the transmission. Grab a piece of wood and a ball peen hammer and gently tap the casing down so it seats itself into place. Now because this gasket maker dries rather quickly, you need to be doing this in a somewhat fast manner. So following that, you're gonna to wanna to grab each of the 20 bolts that we use to connect both of the casings together, and you're going to want to install those into the transmission. Right here, you can see that I'm using my impact tool, but I do not have this set to anywhere near a high setting. I'm just using this so that I'll be able to save myself a little bit of time. I'm not using the impact setting at this point. Because the torque spec for this is only 24 foot pounds, you don't wanna use that gun to zap the bolts in because you're gonna be over torquing each one of those bolts. If there's any excess gasket maker that oozes out from the transmission, you can either leave it alone to let it dry or remove it once it is fully cured. Now if I were you, I would let this dry because it's really nice when this is fully cured. You can simply pull this away and it leaves a really nice clean line. Now this next part that I'm gonna be addressing doesn't necessarily have to be done now. It could have been done beforehand. So once you have the axles removed from the transmission, you can replace the axle seals. So there's going to be one of them found on one side of the diff and another one found on the opposite side. Those there make a nice seal around the axle shaft and it ensures that none of the transmission fluid will be able to leak out of it. So as you can see, these ones aren't exactly looking the greatest. Mechanically, they're perfectly fine, but they do have a little bit of surface rust to them. But because I'm particular with this stuff, as you guys know, I'm gonna be changing these things out. This Mini's got about 120,000 clicks on the car, so it's not a half bad time to change them out too. Now, I didn't experience any leaking with them, but because they're cheap, it's a good idea now to replace them. Now, you can purchase the proper Mini tool to get this done, 
Or if you want, you can use a regular pry bar. If you stick it gently right underneath the axle seal, you can use leverage against the other side of the axle seal to pry it up and you'll be able to remove that axle seal from the transmission. To reinstall the new one, it's super easy. Clean up around the outside of that axle seal, make sure there's no corrosion or no anything in there, and then just simply tap with either a piece of wood or even a hammer down that seal so it makes a proper seal. This stuff isn't rocket science, it does take a little bit of time and you might have to be slightly careful, but if you guys take this work and you guys go through this effort now, you won't have to address this once the car's back together or when you're driving. So I'm doing all this stuff as preventative maintenance. Once you've got one side down, you can repeat the exact same thing to the other side. As for the aesthetic part of it, I let the transmission sit for a good 24 hours and then I went back to the tranny and used a wire brush to remove any excess gasket maker that I have between both of the casings. Now the reason why I let that sit is so that I can clean this really easily. So I'm removing any excess gasket maker that's found around that entire seal because I want to paint the entire thing. This transmission is made out of aluminum, which means it is going to oxidize if I leave it in this state. But with a little bit of sanding and a little bit of paint, it really goes to show how much better this transmission can look after you put about 20 minutes to half an hour worth of work into it. Now something else to consider is optional ARP bolts. So every single one of these bolts that are found in the transmission, you can replace them with new ones. You don't have to. But if you are gonna be going to this step, you can spend about another 100, 150 bucks on new ARP bolts, and it's gonna make the transmission look unbelievable. So any of the bolts that you found that are attached to the differential that hold the ring gear in place, you can change those out. I've got the part number in the description box, along with all the bolts that you have on the outside of the casing. So those 20 bolts that are found that are mating both the transmission and the clutch casings together, those bolts can be replaced and I have links for that in the description as well. If you guys wanna find more information about this diff or any more information about this transmission, check the description box. I always put more info for you. So if you guys wanna have a read and you guys wanna learn something or two, Check that out. Anyways guys, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, definitely consider doing it. This Mini is gonna be getting a lot of work done to it and this is just one of the things that I need to do to get this Mini off of its jack stands. If you guys wanna follow me on Instagram, you can easily do that. It's at Millmast and you guys will be able to see all the stuff that I'm doing before it hits the camera. Anyways guys, if you have any further questions, comment sections down there, you know what to do. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you in the next one.